Okay, uh, thanks for coming again. Um, so I'll show a lot of different uh, images today, and I'll try to keep it short in this 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, so, you know, uh, I'm based in Istanbul, Turkey, and I, I've been working with complex networks for some time as art. Um, also, sometimes in activism as well. Um, for me, network, uh, you know, the idea of network, also the, the structure and the material of network is a, a creative medium. And in like the way video, photography, um, sculpture, painting is. Uh, so I've been studying its properties, um, and these are the you know dynamics and and, and structures of the, of the networks in general. Um, and I use them to visualize the inherent power structures in a variety of different uh, and in, uh, in topics. Um, I saw this image recently, maybe you know this before already, uh, there's this Karl Marx credit card. Um, it was on the news and it was very interesting for me, you know, it's very hybrid. Uh, it kind of tells the condition of today a little bit. Um, in 2005, I had a, a chance to meet with this company, MasterCard actually. That's why I'm showing this image as well. Um, and I was studying at the MIT Media Lab, and they asked us to visualize their transactions data in their database. You know, these are like millions of transactions in a company like MasterCard. And, and after I left the meeting, I felt a bit uncomfortable. And, you know, if I thought if these companies see my spending patterns, I should see this myself too. Um, then I literally went and downloaded my bank transactions from, uh, at the time, Bank of America. I was in, in the US and starting, uh, started looking at this information and, and seeing patterns and what I see, you know, uh, what, what I buy things um, every, every once in a while. And these are things like, you know, a lot of coffee from Starbucks, um, you know, monthly grocery shopping or ATM cash withdrawals and stuff. And as you may know, these banks, uh, they actually share this information with third parties. And these are, you know, including financial services, retailers, uh, marketing companies, and so on. And they share this information even if you say no. This is in the actual leaflet they have. They say this, you know, if you request that we not share information with third parties, we may still share this. You know, they're quite serious in that. Uh, so. And using my own bank, trans bank information, I started uh, developing a software. And, and this is a live software system. I called it My Pocket, you know, um, and that predicts what I will buy next every other day using my own bank history, you know, my transaction history. And, you know, every time I swipe my card in these, uh, you know, uh, credit card payment uh, machines, the transaction data, the the purchase data goes to the financial cloud and goes into some machines and then goes into these banks and distributed to the marketing companies. And I use that information uh, using my own you know, bank password and, and, and usernames and downloaded this information to my own servers to actually use it and you know, to kind of analyze this information. And, um, and then later on, these, this data turns into a, a prediction through these kind of uh, algorithms that I developed. Um, I show this uh, piece in uh, multiple pieces, actually. It's an installation, like you see a little bit here. It's from an uh, exhibition from 2009. Um, you know, on one hand, you see the diagrams that makes this prediction happen, the mechanism on the right side. And on, on the other side, you see the, uh, the list of predictions. That's a live software screen as well. And that updates itself every day, and where you see my uh, predictions of purchases of that day and, and the past predictions that are correct or incorrect on, on, the, on the wall. Um, so to make this thing happen, you know, this uh, system, if you can see it well, I don't know, it's a little bit uh, bright here. Um, <coughs> I, I, made, I made connections between the transaction events themselves. These are like, you know, a purchase from Starbucks, a purchase from, I don't know, uh, what is it here? Like, uh, Media Temple is a hosting company, and a purchase from uh, gelato, you know, ice cream and stuff. And they are connected to each other if they are in the same category, like a coffee category or ice cream category or, you know, grocery shopping category. Or they are connected with each other if they are, if they are sharing the same day of the week, like Monday, Tuesday, weekend, weekdays. 
a kind of a logic that I developed to make this prediction happen from this uh, thing. Um, also, uh, you see a little movie here. This is actually an animation captured from the live software, which actually makes the predictions. Um, this is the visualization of how it works. Um, basically, you see this diagram that moves over time, and, and these connections between these transactions show up, and they kind of come into the cameras, leave this, I mean, the scene, leave the scene, and come back again. Um, I'll go on with this later on. Um, so uh, I put this information publicly on the web, so anyone could see what I bought in the past and what I will buy in the future. And, and you know, in this view again, you, the red ones, the current prediction, etc. And, and in a way, you know, as a result of this action, uh, my spending data was no longer exclusive to the bank, com a bank company and its their you know surrounding companies. And, and one last thing about this project, I also collected all my receipts in a box, and you know these paper receipts you got from our purchases, and and, and every time a, trans a transaction is predicted correctly, I stamp them with a you know actual stamp, and, and put the probability on them. You can maybe see a little green uh, stamp on top of each receipt, and I call the, these objects predicted objects because they are exist their existence actually were deliberately predicted through an algorithm over time. Um, and they are in a way ready-mates, I call them, found in the future rather than from the past. Uh, so uh, for two years, you know, I lived uh, with this kind of project a little bit, you know, seeing my predictions from my phone, from the web, etc., and also exhibiting this work uh, as installation live in different institutions. In a way, I put myself uh, into a life experiment, I call it, like to see and understand the effects and of this intelligent financial cloud on me. Um, this is the first project I wanted to show you briefly, and then I will move on with other mapping uh, projects a little bit. Then maybe I can stop and we can talk. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I want to come to this idea that you know, sociologist, uh, you may know him, Manuel Castells, describes that power does not reside in institutions. Um, rather, they are actually located in the network, networks that actually structure the society. These are social, you know, uh, in organizational or conceptual, a lot of, many of them. And, and I think that technique of network mapping is a kind of a tool that can be used to understand and reveal those little inherent power structures, you know, in a, in a, at least as a start. Um, so I'll show you some works that I've done in this area. Um, this was an exhibition, uh, 2009. Uh, I was invited to work, do some work about institutional critique. So I took all the artists who were participated in this exhibition and I asked them their past group exhibitions, and I made a connection uh, between each artist based on uh, the group shows they've been together. Um, so this is the model, how it looks. Very simple, you know. Each node is an artist, and they're connected with each other if they have been in the same exhibition in the past before. Um, so exhibiting together, I think, is an interesting uh, relationship, and it's a strong one, which is, you know, both personal, historical, and conceptual at the same time. Uh, it tells a lot, you know, it makes the history, etc. And, and I collected around 750 unique uh, group exhibitions dated from uh, 1980 to 2010, and, you know, the oldest artist was Aisha Ackman, I think. Um, and made a diagram like, which looks like this, that you may not see much from this, but you know, it's a big print and also uh, an image that you can browse through. And there are around 5,000 artists in this map, and they are kind of uh, pushed on the sides based on their, again, connectivity. So imagine this software, this is the image result of a software. It's a, um, a physics simulation things connected to each other if they share a uh, you know, connection, and then each connection has this uh, spring quality, so they're like wavy. I pull one of them, the other one comes with it. So they all, from all sides, they push each other, and then as a result of that, they end up being somewhere in this map. And some names you may know, you know, and they are, they are together in this map if they actually um, they share similar connections with others. So, like, you know, you can see, say, 
uh, John Cage and Bruce Newman, Norman, in this case, are close to each other because they share a lot of uh, connections. That means they, they've been with, in the exhibitions with other shared artists um, in their life. Um, some details from the map, you know, uh, Banu Cenetoğlu is an artist from Turkey and she's not in any of these clusters, as you can see, because she's pulled from different clusters, so she stayed somewhere in between. So this tells something about her position a little bit, I think. Uh, I'm not re really reading these maps, but I'm just making the map and then, you know, let it read later or discuss it with people, etc. Um, I'm also in the map here, as you can see. And at the time, that is 2010, I was not very active in Turkey, and now I'm more into this cluster, probably, if you just map it again, you know. And one thing to say, this map is not the, the global, you know, or the whatever art world. This is just one specific context, the, the 20 artists and their networks of their, uh, say, history, represented in a single map. In the same exhibition, I showed next to this map another map, and that was, uh, it's very hard to, from, hard to see from here, but it was a map of, um, uh, let's say, companies, public companies, and foundations, tax-exempt foundations found in Turkey, and they are, based, they are connected to each other based on their shared board members. You know, like the previous, uh, Presentation. It's very critical. Board membership is, you know, really connects these institutions to each other. And being a board member means you steer this organization, company, whatever. So it's a great power point. Um, so I mapped it out, and then this is one, some details uh, you may know, like Istanbul Cultural is uh, foundation, which is there. They make the Istanbul Biennale happening. They are the organizers, and in this board of this organization, you can see. Um, the CEO of the pharmaceutical, the biggest pharmaceutical company in Turkey, the CEO of you know the Garanti Bank, which is the big one, and, and then the, the mayor of Istanbul, and so on. You can navigate these connections in a single map. Um, another uh, detail shows the you know the aligned uh, companies which are there because they are they have the uh, they, they share Islamic ideology. Let's say this is very big time in Turkey. You know the current government and stuff. Um, so they are clustered together because somehow they, um, they share similar ideologies. Um, another uh, model, uh, because I, was, you know, I found myself in this art world by doing this type of work over time, I was interested in the, the, the dynamics of the, uh, the economy of the art, or the art world, let's say. Um, so I made ma uh, models of these, you know, I made this model based on uh, the connection between collectors and the, and the artists they have in their collection. Of course, this is a very uh, private information, you know, very hard to find. And so I went uh, one by one, each collector that I know that I can reach, asked them to give me their information, and then I, and I had to convince them to publish this information on public. So among almost 100 collectors in Turkey, I started in Turkey, um, uh, I was able to get only 19 of them. Uh, to convince them, you know, and then they gave me the information, I put them together into a map uh, like this, hard to see, but, you know, still something, you can find them online. Um, so, I was able to map this inform uh, information, and then, you know, uh, in this diagram, you can see on the right side, some uh, early modern art collectors from Turkey, you know, like 1900s, painting, sculpture, focused mostly, and on the left side, you see uh, more media, focused and you know, media photography, new media art, etc., focused collectors. Some artists in the center, like Kutlu Ataman, Ayşe Akman, etc., are quite central because they, are, they, have, uh, uh, they are in multiple collections around this, in this map. So they became automatically in the center of this map. Um, this work was you know, exhibited both as print and both as, a, both as a, like a, you know, an interactive wall. Uh, where you can actually explore these uh, connect connectivities and basically navigate the map and, and kind of get to see the, the fractions of the research and, you know, turn on names, turn off names, etc. So, as you can see, the, get the idea of how things are connected to each other and then when you pull one of them, the others come with it. It's like a, this kind of a spring physics simulation. And this is kind of a very common technique that I apply into the, this area. Okay. Uh, another work uh, in this 
along these lines. In Berlin Biennale this year, I made a map of uh, the artists who applied to the Biennale and, 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 and stated their political opinions. This data was collected by the organization, KW, you know, the, the uh, organization in Berlin, and, and I used this information to actually map out the, 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 the uh, artists and their political opinions map, let's say. Um, you know, it applies a large, large wall print again, and visitors can navigate the details and see the, you know, the big picture, go get close, you know, navigate people, and then get far, and then look at the big pictures, see who's in the periphery, who's in the center, and, and what does it mean, of course. Uh, it's all there. Um, so towards the center of the map, you can see uh, some you know, uh, political concepts which are very popular, like uh, feminism or, you know, uh, What's there? Anarchism, environmentalism, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And and on the peripheries, you can see quite eclectic ideologies and identities and political opinions. You know, they are very different. Um, some things, uh, for instance, uh, let me see. What what was very interesting here is that uh, some artists were they had very like mixed uh, 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 opinions. Like they were both rightist and environmentalist. You know, both leftist and masculinist both anarchist and liberal, you know, different, it's very interesting, maybe they did a joke or something, I, I have no idea. But I just used this data from the uh, institution. Um, so, so for this event, Truth is Concrete, you know, I, we asked uh, the participants to uh, provide us the names of collaborators they have uh, they have from this event itself you know like the uh, so we made a, we collected this list of collaborators and then again in the same technique I made a map uh, based on these collaborations and you know this map includes it's hard to see here you can see it on the uh, next building here there are the white boxes and on the corridor there's oval, oval corridor you can see the names and there are around 180 something uh, unique name I mean names and they're uh, they are cl uh, clustered based on uh, their connectivity so the colors blue green and red represents the clusters uh, exist the natural organic clusters exist in this uh, in this group um, they mean many things probably but I don't know the people here much but um, uh, we talked with Florian a little bit about it, you know, what they may mean. <laughs> we try to uh, read it a little bit. But the people who are in the central, like Chantal Mouffet, for instance, or, you know, uh, Irit Ragov, they, they are between all these different clusters. Um, so based on the collaboration uh, specific relationship. Um, <clears throat> the other map uh, next in front of it is the, um, the network map of tactics. And here the the participants, uh, again, provided us the tactics that they used. And so I made a connection between them based on the shared use of tactics. So this is only a tactics network. Uh, you can see activism quite central in the map, and but around it you can see performance, uh, you know, public space collaboration, organize, or, organizing in general, and, and many eclectic, again, ideas in the periphery, eclectic techniques in the periphery. Um, so you can see more in the detail from the uh, exhibi little, you know, exhibition there. And I'll lastly show, talk about briefly on the, uh, the workshops that I've been developing. So since this is a tactic talk in a way, um, um, I'm not really describing the details of how this tactic works, but I'll show, I'm telling some stories and through the works. Um, these, uh, in fact, there are very specific techniques to use, uh, and they're very easy to learn and easy to apply. Um, you can see some t topics uh, like, you know, uh, topology is very interesting. When you look at a network, what's the topology like? Is it centralized, decentralized, distributed, etc.? And when you look at a network again, you can start to read um, the most central actors immediately, and you can you know, infer some more meaning from that. Um, also, you, know, can s you can name the clusters based on data that you see in it, and, and, and you know, different ideas here. So uh, I'll show you some images from these workshops and then maybe tell you how we worked here. Um, we usually uh, do hand-drawn diagrams and these uh, hand-drawn diagrams later on are put into a computer program and they became, you know, organized themselves and then we can s clearly see the details. Mm. Um, 
You know, one of these examples, uh, again, this was in the Berlin Biennale at the time. Uh, I oftentimes do workshops when I do the exhibition as well, like together. Um, and this was a research that she was doing on 9-11 uh, rubbles, like how they were distributed from the site to the world, you know, to Chinese steel producers, etc. And another uh, example, uh, similar co concepts in gender-based art and how gender-based art is connected uh, in terms of their actors and stuff. You know, flows of animal herds, in, and, and oftentimes participants use um, online resources to, you know, Wikipedia or whatever they can find and during their mapping exercise. Um, and sometimes they map their own uh, personal, you know, interests based, like for instance, this, this person here on, on, the, on the bottom, she was trying to map the, uh, the allergies she has to, to different foods, you know, and different ingredients in different foods. Very interesting. And, and sometimes, you know, pe people use post-its to, to make movable nodes and stuff. It's like a brainstorming session as well. And a lot of sketches then, then turn into interesting diagrams, and they use background maps to actually put another map on top of an existing map. This one was the network, network uh, what was that? The science of network, something like that. It was like a basically map of different science fields and how they are connected to each other based on citations they have. You know, like economy, management science, you know, political science, psychology, da da da. And, and they, these participants, they made, um, they put artists on, these net, on this ma existing map and then put, connected the artists to different type of, uh, you know, science fields to understand basically how science and art kind of gets, comes together. And another one, uh, in Sao Paulo Biennale a few years ago, we, the students who were working in the Biennale, they made a map of, they actually reconfigured the Biennale based on what they think it should be in their own way. So they actually draw, you know, lines between different works based on their, uh, the concept that they that's interesting. So they reorganized the uh, Biennale, you know, again, based on how they feel. And in these workshops, people do a lot of different versions of maps, like map after another, after eight version, maybe you have, you come up with an interesting map. And so oftentimes, as you can see, the first version, second version, more organized and then more clear, you know, your ideas are more clear in, in, in this diagram. And we always present these works to each other, discuss it, and then basically, you know, get the idea and have a chance to compare your map with other people's map, etc. It's a type of a learning process. Um, um, this was in, uh, I've done this workshop many places, and this was in Ulaanbaatar, and we made, uh, in Mongolia, uh, we made this collaborative big map, you know, huge table, and based on the, uh, we, so the, everybody actually put a, draw a symbol, like a Mongolian cultural symbol on the, on the paper, and then connected them to each other if they're related somehow. Uh, it's like a brainstorming session again, and then they basically made a map of Mongolian cultural symbols. I work with NGOs a lot, and, and NGOs, civil society organizations, it's better to call them, actually. Um, they, they, do, they, they like to do organizational mapping. So, you know, as you may know, NGOs, and they, they're small, and then they always collaborate with each other. So there's a big organizational analysis need in it. Um, so I show them how the technique, and they use it to apply, basically. This one was the... Uh, network map of two organizations, one in France, another one in Istanbul, uh, Turkey, and then they made a sh network of their organization, and they saw the shared, uh, you know, funding bodies, the shared uh, ideas that they were into, etc. It's nice to discover these, you know, shared, uh, uh, shared, shared values, let's say, between two organizations. They also made taxonomies, you know, what type of relationships exist between these organizations. You know, you can see advocacy, campaigning, reporting together, lobbying together, street action together, legal assistance together, you know, to each other, uh, capacity building and funding each other is a kind of a common uh, techniques. Um, one maybe last example, this is the hard to see again, but sorry for the images. Um, the, uh, the resistance against nuclear power in Turkey. They made a map of how this resistance uh, started and how it grew, and all the actors in it, you know, both who are resisting and the, who are opposed. Um, this little hand sketch diagram, you know, with a lot of bodies in it, turned into a computer program later on and then became more organized, readable, and, you know, then uh, discussable, basically. And we do this all the time, and it's very useful for communicating your 
kind of complex idea to the general public um, or related bodies who, may, who might be or people who have that you need to convince. And oftentimes in these workshops, people transfer the hand-drawn diagram to a computer program next to it. You know, you can see two people working together here. And I provide also tools. Uh, I develop programs and, and to basically make this thing happen as well, help people to kind of de develop it further. Um, lastly, <coughs> Uh, this quote is very interesting for me uh, from Deleuze and Guattari. You may know it very well, uh, Thousand Plateau. Uh, you know, basically, they say the, the map or diagram, as they call abstract machine as well, um, does not uh, function to represent even something real, but rather constructs a real that is yet to come. Um, I think it's very interesting. And I see, in a way, you know, these mapping tools, and they, they capture some reality at some point, but when you use them for strategizing, for you know, understanding a complex reality, uh, they become a tool for action. You, know, you can re actually act on it. And then it generates new realities, literally. Okay? I'll just stop here, and then one last thing to mention maybe can be useful for who are interested in. Uh, I developed this program called, uh, ooh, here maybe, yeah, called Graph Commons, as you can tell from the name. Uh, there are, this is an online social uh, platform where you can go up and then draw maps with the tools I have there. And then you can basically share them with people. You can collaborate on different projects, mapping tools together. It's a quite interactive. You know, I can you know, move things around. And this is some map that done by uh, 10, maybe 8, 10 people here. And another map, this is the uh, art institutions and their supporters in Turkey, like sponsorship relationships and stuff. Another one uh, shows the, again, board member relationship between the, inst the art institutions and so on. Okay, different ideas here. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Time is used up as well. Okay. No questions, I'm sorry, but maybe you can uh, translate or the bar. Okay, we can talk later, yeah. <laughs>